Well, hello everyone and welcome to this spontaneous Facebook Live with my dear friend Wendy Duke. I am Anne LaFollette and I'm super excited to come to you live today. I'm actually in Paris. Wendy, where are you? I'm in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. The Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. And I it's am so excited to have you on live with me tonight because thanks. you have been developing this amazing online course about what's called Oshier. And yes. a lot of people have never heard of what that is. I have a little bit of a Japanese background because I was an East Asian studies major in college. And then lucky I went, girl. Uh, very lucky. And then I went and lived in Japan afterwards. So let's start out by you telling us a little bit about your, your you know, creative journey. What did you like to do as a kid? Oh, I was dancing and drawing. I started ballet at the same time I started doing art. And uh, dancing has sort of gone by, <laughs> yeah. but the art has always been here. Uh, I started out going to a professional interior design school in Washington, D.C., a very international school, and became adept at doing watercolor renderings for designers. Wow. So before I even graduated from school, I was hired as a rendering artist for the premier furniture store in Washington, D.C., and uh, provided full-scale watercolor renderings of homes before they existed. Wow. So the designers would take me through the showroom and say, that couch, that bookcase, here's the paint swatch. I have 24 hours before I have to make a presentation. And the idea was, I discovered, to sell the furniture because that's where they made their money. It was a huge markup. But I did beautiful renderings and that was a lot of fun. And then I got married and moved to Northern Japan. And I was in what was called a remote isolated tour. And the process of being in Japan was getting used to being married, getting used to being pregnant, and learning things and walking around the villages and things like that. And it was awesome. Uh, the marriage did not survive the nine year mark, <laughs> but the Oshie that I learned from a sensei was what pivoted. I mean, I've used this art form for 50 years now. And so, and Wendy, I, how did you first discover it when you were in Japan? I was in a bank, and my husband was doing business with the bankers, and I was in the lobby, and I looked up on the wall, and there was this magnificent kabuki dancer in full brocade and everything. And I said, oh, my God, whatever this is, I have to learn it. And uh, the gal that was my husband's secretary on base who lived a uh, native speaker lived in the town found the woman who made that and talked her into teaching me now she spoke skoshi english and i spoke skoshi japanese which means nothing and i learned by pantomime she would do something i would copy it she would rip it out of my hand, rip it apart, smack my hand, which she loved, and then make me do it again. I got so good because I hated that she kept hitting me. And apparently this was very typical of the old style apprentice system. Teaching. And to learn Oshie, the old style, you would be an apprentice for maybe 10 or 15 years before you were allowed to hang the shingle and say you were a, a sensei. A sensei, And yeah. um, I now teach how to do it in two to three hours. <laughs> so that must be a, so first of all, we have to say hi to Lillimore because Lillimore is joining Yay, us live hello. from Sweden. Hello, Lillimore. In Sweden, how cool. It's lovely to see you. I'm in your time being, zone. <laughs> I'm in Paris in your time zone. We're being very cosmopolitan here. 
<laughs> totally awesome. And um, so obviously there's quite a journey from learning it in Japan to being able to now teach it in an online forum and an online course oh, uh, really, yeah. really efficiently. And so yes. before you talk about that, though, I would like a little bit of background that has supported what you're doing now. Ah, uh, so I am... Built, I have built a course in Kajabi, which is the same program you're using. Yep. And I, if that's the direction I think you'd like to go, is that I've been doing all the tech things. And I will say that's an uphill battle. <laughs> tech is not my uh, forte. It was my husband's. And I've been discovering all these clever things that he did that I have no clue. So I have had to learn things. And since he's no longer here to yell at, I have to yell at myself and redo them. <laughs> so I, so Shalini is here also, which is awesome. Hi, Shalini. Yay. It's nice to see Yay. you. And uh, she said, teaching, thankfully, without the hand slapping. <laughs> yes, my because be there's advantages to the video that I've discovered. First off, when you're teaching in person, you get one shot. If the student doesn't get the concept and if the student doesn't, isn't happy about what they did because they're confused, they're probably never going to do it again. They might be very nice to me. They'll have a piece that's, I don't let my students go home without finishing the piece. But I think that the video system is so much more robust. It's, it's like you can get in to the thing, watch the video and go, huh? And replay and replay until you get what it is that I'm expressing. I also have side-by-side -side PDFs so that you can go step by step. Some of my students need to see it in writing. Some of my students need to watch it on video. And some of my students need both. So this is just an ideal situation as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Plus, they go can ahead. send emails and ask questions and it's like, yes. <laughs> exactly. They can communicate with you, right? They can totally reach you so you can troubleshoot yes. and answer their questions. Yes. But you have the ability with an online program to teach with different modalities, right? Exactly. So you can teach for the people who love to watch the video. You can yes. also provide the written documentation with the step-by-step -step for people who prefer to read. So it you means it. it's open to many more students than uh, than it would otherwise be, which is a really, yes. an ama it's amazing that we live in a world that allows for that. So everyone can be welcomed and know that they will be able to learn through the modality that works best for them. I think the COVID thing, even though itself is pretty terrible, my granddaughter has long COVID because she works in daycare and she's been reinfected so many times. Mm. But the, the upside of COVID is this online teaching community has skyrocketed yeah and the idea that i'm talking to people in sweden and in the us and in paris and in hawaii and everywhere else it's just amazing so show us what contemporary oshie actually is so that oh. people can it's always you know a picture is always worth a thousand words all right, here we go. Yeah. Yep, perfect. Right there is perfect. All right, I'm so good at reverse stuff. This is Contemporary OCA. This is actually one of the projects in the course. And it's a landscape. And if you can see the texture of the fabric, this was originally one piece of like mat board, backing board. It's acid free. The design was drawn on it. Then I cut the pieces apart. I put padding on this piece and this piece and. <laughs> yeah, so it's very three dimensional, right, Wendy? It's very, it's yeah. very three dimensional, very dimensional, which is which is hard to see. But then there, you also have like a couple of stars that look like they also are very. They're, I don't know what those Horsky are, but crystals. They're little crystals. Yeah, they're little crystals. Yeah. So it's very so beautiful and three dimensional. Yeah, so the thing is, all of this is glued. There's no sewing. No sewing. <laughs> no sewing. It's glued. And in the course, you get to go step by step. 
starting out with just one piece, which is a leaf or a heart that has two sections that you put together. And once you learn that construction technique, then each lesson every week after that is on the shoulders of the first. So you learn the techniques, you create a finished piece, and at the end of the course, you'll have at least four finished pieces. And the process is, if you don't draw, I have all the patterns, you copy them. If you can draw, toward the end of the first basic course, I encourage people to adapt their landscape pattern and make it their own if they want to. And also the thing that makes it very personal for each student is they can use their stash of fabrics, things they've collected over the years and just can't throw out even though they're just little tiny pieces. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, OCA is scrap and stash friendly. Uh, you can use trim and ribbon and crystals. Now here's another uh, landscape piece. I'm gonna, yeah, there we go. Perfect. All right, so. Wow, so that was very right. puffy. That one looks very, very puffy. Very puffy. So, but do you see I used ribbon? Yeah. Right here. Ribbon along and the bottom. And I used a crystal again. And this is, a, oh goodness, I'm sorry. I'm so unadept at this. This is like a buckle that I, the black thing. Oh, right. Yep. Yep. And then this. if you see from the side, what I've done here is I've put this on a canvas stretcher, a little five by seven, wrapped it with a beautiful linen off a dress that I found in Goodwill. Yep. And then this piece is mounted on a little round disc of foam core to pop it out from to, the front. To make it pop off. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That is beautiful. So students can do anything. Um, this is the thing about Oshie, is the, it's limitless. Every student has a different spin on what they want to do, what their style, what their colors are, what they're creating the piece for. So um, the progression is really amazing to watch from project to project as students claim without me hitting them. Yeah, yes. <laughs> they claim the art form as something they want to do. Now I'm going to show you a image. This is Wendy trying to figure this out. Now here we go. Can you see that? Yes, we can. This is an OCA piece that's 16 by 20. I sold the original, so you're looking at a reproduction. Yeah. Now when I get up closer, you can see that I hand colored the sky. I made reflections in the water and I made the rocks look more rock-like using Prismacolor pencil, which is a wax pencil. And so that is a way of students embellishing and creating things. That's something that happens in just a little bit in the first course, but in the second course, which is the next level, uh, then I encourage students to embellish their fabric. Fantastic. Now here's a little fun piece. This is a 3D piece. Isn't that wild? Oh, that's beautiful. So it's like this, a prism. it's like, yeah, a tetrahedron, if you want mm -hmm. to get technical. Tetrahed tetrahedron. <laughs> right. I would so never it, have come up with that word. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, married to a physicist and the daughter of a physicist, I better know my yes. geometric form. <laughs> I love it. So this part here is, uh, this is polymer clay. This is handmade paper. And these two pieces here and here our fabric. So it's kind of a riff on Oshie, but very dimensional. And um, there's just, you can do anything. You can the do biggest anything. pieces I've ever made, um, I've done a lot of commission work over the years, hotels, banks, restaurants, private residences, corporate meeting rooms. And the biggest piece I ever made was 40 feet long. Wow. And it was for the Automobile Association, American Automobile Association in Baltimore. I'm sure it's long gone. Um, the thing about commercial 
installations is they usually have a life of about six or seven years and then it gets completely refreshed. I don't know how many hotel jobs I've done where I have no idea where the Oshie is. Is now. <laughs> corporate came in and said, we love it, but it doesn't match our corporate look. So you have to get rid of it. <laughs> I'd already been paid. So that was all right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So now yeah. tell us a little bit more about the course itself. Enrollment is open right now. Yes, it is. And all the links are on um, uh, on my website and on my Contemporary OCA free Facebook page. Anybody can go to. And the enrollment is open through the end of Sunday at eight o'clock. That's when I uh, close enrollment for the spring. And um, I'm expecting a nice small cadre of students that are going to be launching my course and helping me by asking questions that I didn't know to answer, you know? So just like how you, every time you launch a, the course, you do the next version. I've, I've watched you do this and I love the idea that you can keep making it more robust and answering the questions and giving the support information. Uh, and you can just keep doing that. I love that. Yeah. And listen, the first group of students are going to be incredible advocates for you, right? Because, so. <laughs> right? Because it's because the whenever we launch a new course, and I launched my first course, my Pattern Design Academy course at the beginning in January of 2019 now. And that group, I think it was 25 students went through it with me. And mm -hmm. they had, just like you said, they had such great input on the kind of questions that they asked, how, just how I could not only respond to those questions, but then incorporate some additional lessons into the curriculum. It exactly. was absolutely fantastic. And I, I just love the whole, the possibilities. Yeah, the possibilities are wonderful. And then the next yep. iteration, they're going to want to come along on that journey because they feel so yep. much like they've helped you be successful and they've also helped make the course, make the course ready for the next iteration of it. You know, when I got started with doing the course, initially, I was writing a book and it was going to be the complete book. And um, I soon realized that I wasn't ready for that. And I have attempted on many occasions to get the chapters together and all that. I have a lot ready, but I realized that without this interaction with students along the way, I wasn't ready to give all of the information because I didn't have it. So parallel to this basic course, and then the second course that I do, which will be ready uh, fall of next year, mm -hmm. um, I will be writing the book that it will be the companion to these first two courses. And it'll be sort of a combination coffee table book. It'll be spiral bound so it can lay flat and you can open up a two page spread and follow the steps and watch the video and Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is going to be outstanding. That is going yeah. to be totally, totally outstanding. So now Not tell like us. Not like I need more pressure. <laughs> you, listen, one step at a time. Right. One step at a time, right? We put one foot in front of the next, and then all of a sudden we can look back and say, wow. Exactly. So exactly. tell me something about your fabulous, like you have these live sessions during this open enrollment oh. period. So talk to us about those. So there's one just later today at four o'clock. It's free. There's another one Saturday morning at 10. Now this is all Eastern U.S. Eastern not U.S. Yep. Eastern U.S. <laughs> and then the last one is uh, Sunday night at six. And you can go to my website and click on about a zillion buttons there that'll take you to the free enrollment page so you can register to watch and it'll make sure that you know how to get there. And, um, in that, I give a step-by-step -step of what's in the course, what you're going to be doing, what I provide. And then at the end of the course, you can at the end of the live session, you can ask questions. And then 
pop on over to the enrollment if it's right for you at this time. I have a number of people that have decided to put it on their wish list for October. Fantastic. And that's what the next launch is. I'm only offering it twice a year. So, Just if, like you. so I'm going to go to your website, uh, oh, cloudhavenstudio.com. Okay, okay. And so that you can, uh, so that I can make sure I'm showing people exactly where to go to join okay. your live workshops. Right, yep. these live sessions. So I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to go Ooh, to your there's website. There's that old lady. <laughs> there she me, is. You and me both. So uh, it's, it's, it's cloud. I'm turning Haven. 74 this year, which blows me away. How is that possible? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Listen, we are living every day. We are Absolutely. right. We are living every day. Never too late to create, as someone famous yes. I know said. <laughs> it's never too late to create. Exactly. So if you scroll down there, yep, I scroll down. Scrolling. So this basically says learn contemporary Ochier, and then you introduce yourself, Wendy Christine Duke, and this is where people would click to join, right? And yes. this is essentially so that they can come to one of your uh, your free workshops. Exactly, and it just takes a few seconds to sign up. And um, I've got quite a few people scheduled for later today. I think I've got, oh, uh, God, 20 of them anyway. Fantastic. And then tell yeah. us just a little bit about, like, what should people expect in one of those free in one? I'm going to bring you back. So on it's about screen. 40 minutes, Anne, just yep. 40 minutes. It's not a heavy hard sell. I give all the pricing information at the end. But mostly what I'm doing is taking you through what's inside the course, what you can expect in terms of video material, printed PDFs, what you can expect in terms of the Facebook group, that there's a private Facebook group for my students. And much like your system and your private Facebook group in the atelier, mm -hmm. I find that, by the way, the richest, most wonderful, supportive group of women I don't think there's any men. I'm surprised by that, actually. But I just love being able to be in a membership group like that. So I'm hoping that mine follows in your footsteps. <laughs> yes. Well, listen, you're so sweet to mention my membership, Anne's Atelier. Of course, I picked the name Atelier because I spent quite a bit of time in France as a child. Yes. And the word Atelier is French for creative studio. And um, right, <laughs> and so it's perfect. And we have a bunch of incredibly creative and talented women who come together every month, several times. I love it. to uh, to share what we're it. working on. And so the the live events really are to get clear about what it is that I'm offering in my course. The biggest reason I did it as a behind the scenes rather than like a mini course is because most people don't even know. In fact, I know most people don't know how to pronounce it and what is Ochier right. and what is contemporary Ochier. So I really needed to spend time informing people what it is and what it takes to learn it, that you can't, don't have to sew, you don't have to draw, everything is glued, and I give you all the patterns. And between the step-by-step -step videos and the PDFs, it's really simple to go through the process. Hi, Deidre. I want to say hi to Deirdre. I also want to say hi to Judy because Judy is Judy. here as well. Hi, Judy Hayes. Hi, it's Judy. lovely to see you. And uh, so, to, you know, we sort of skipped over an important part of the conversation, uh -oh. which is what's the, what's the difference between traditional Ochier and ah, contemporary Ochier? A very good question. I will cover that in the event, but I'll tell you in person because, you know, friend to friend. Yeah. Con contemporary Ochier is my version using uh, all kinds of fun materials, batiks and quilting mm. fabric and wool and velvet and all the things. Traditional Ochier is almost always um, flat in a picture frame or like my little fish over here yep. in the pedestal. Um, in fact, I'll bring Mr. Fish over here. So this is definitely contemporary. There he goes. Wow. He's and amazing. you see that's an antique button for his eye. And if you see it from the side, it's you beautiful. can see it's thin. 
Very thin. It looks dimensional because of the technique of construction. And you can see that I used ribbon on it to make the tail. Yep. And the, and the fin. I'll get good at this. I feel like Vanna White after a while. You are, yes, you're doing a great job. So this is sitting in a pedestal. And um, the back is covered with ultra suede. Ooh la la. Wow. And uh, I use gold uh, cording along the, the edge to hide the raw edges. So this is contemporary. Nobody in Japan does it this way. So fabulous. There it's... is a very old technique called stick hina, which is means dolls. They look like little puppets on a stick. And the children would play with them and use the tatami mats to stick them in. Really cool. Yeah. So I didn't know that existed when I was learning OCA. And when I, I picked up this idea, the idea of putting things in a pedestal, while I was playing shoots and ladders with my daughter. And they had these little playing pieces that had a little figure sitting in a little mm -hmm. thing and you moved it around. And this is where this idea came from. I was kind of bummed out when I found out that they'd been doing it for hundreds of years. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this piece has a funny story. I was commissioned to create this piece by a jeweler. And the jeweler wanted to feature pearls and coral and things from the sea, right? Abalone. So I made some fish for him, and this is one of them. And we put them in the, you know, the jewelry windows are very small, locked things. So we had the pearls draped on it, and everything looked lovely. Two days later, he called me and said, come take them back. And I said, why? He said, everyone wants to buy the damn fish, and nobody <laughs> wants my jewelry. <laughs> well, yeah, what can I say? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's a wonderful story. It, it, it was, it was, who that's knew? a wonderful story. <laughs> yeah, but for my students to go from the traditional look, mostly it's kabukis, geishas, a few Hello Kitties. There is a version of, um, Oshie called Hagoita. I don't know if you've ever been to the Edo market at New Year's. In not at New Edo, Year's. Tokyo. Not at New Year's. Right. So they sell these very exaggerated versions of Oshie. And they're mounted on what's called a their version of a badminton paddle. And they're wooden wooden things about this tall. And there's the front of it's been decorated with a geisha or kabuki or whatever, and they're very exaggerated and dimensional. And it's a super padded technique. I never learned to do that particular kind, but um, there's examples of it on my website and in the course that I'll be doing this afternoon. So traditional Oshie, when I got back to the United States in the early 70s, I was unable to have access to the brocades that the Japanese people made specifically for doll making. And it was scaled down from the big, beautiful kimonos. Right. And it was made, I mean, the doll market in Japan is huge. Right. And so everybody has dolls for doll day and for this and for that, and New Year's and birthdays and girls day. and. So it's a big industry, but I had no access, and this is before the internet. So I would take fabric and hand paint the designs I found on kimonos in National Geographic. National Geographic being my version of Pinterest. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Oh. Yeah. I don't know how many of us had stacks and stacks of magazines and Look and Life and National Geographic and later Smithsonian as a reference imagery. Right. So National I was hand painting the obis to look like the beautiful brocades. And I realized that doing Japanese subject matter wasn't exactly the smartest move for someone on the East Coast of the US. So I started playing around with doing things more contemporary. And uh, it launched a whole new world for me. I think that that's such a beautiful way to have come together the traditional yeah. and the contemporary um, yeah. with still the historical through line of how yes. this began and but how it can be applied in the modern world.
I, I love the fact that there's no end of possibilities. Like I said, I've done huge scaled things. I've, a lot of my pieces like that fish, I wrap it to the back and hang it without frames. So it becomes much more approachable and more dramatic. I have a giant orchid upstairs. I should have thought to bring it. And it's the free form piece and it hangs, the orchid hangs on the wall, just as this giant orchid on your wall. And there's a lot about doing Oshier that I've discovered, but I know I haven't tapped the limit yet. I know I haven't. I'm really hoping I, in, I infect my students with all the possibilities. And that then each student, particularly like the students here in your course that are making fabric, yes, they can create fabric specifically for their own Oshier pieces. That's certainly why I took your course is because I want to create skies, starry skies, sunset, sunrise, clouds, pieces, right. crops, fields in the crops and all that kind of stuff. And you can't find that stuff anywhere. You have to, I mean, I go to fabric stores, well, before COVID, looking for mountains and, uh, gee, do you have any uh, plowed fields? And uh, do you have a butterfly wing, you know? <laughs> so being able to do that inside Adobe Illustrator, thanks to you, you. <laughs> now you can make your own fabrics. It, it, exactly and scale to the piece that you want to make so the hope is that i'll soon have maybe by the fall a collection of fabric that you can use in the actual um course so that like i can create dragonfly imagery and so on so that oh. you can use that which would be fun fantastic yes. fantastic well the i have two ideas for you one okay. is you're already connected with Susan Palmer. Yes. So you should find out since Susan Palmer knows all of the different fabric that she creates, she had helped us manufacture recently. She probably could give you a little snapshot of all of the different fabric that people now own to see uh -huh. if any of it would be interesting. Exactly. For your projects. And I'm on her schedule for the next Round. series for the fabulous so that i will be printing panels and for yourself ordering them through susan yeah and that's why i was saying in the fall course in my october course then those panels will be oh. available and i'll incorporate them in the actual student uh uh, kits. That is so fantastic. And so it's just yeah. such a wonderful way to see the collaboration happening also yes. within sort of hashtag exactly. universe. And who knew that what you're working on would support what Susan's doing and vice versa. Yes, there's a number of your students that I've become friendly with. And uh, I am pretty sure that there is a lot that's going to happen. Now I see Shalini has a question. Uh, she said, "Wendy, is, I don't think I'll no, be able you to." Don't have, you can go right to enrollment, Shalini. There's a. Uh, let's see. I have that posted in my Facebook group. Direct link to enrollment. I also have it on my Facebook page, and so I will ask my web designer to help me to actually have it on the web page as well so but Wendy, tell me real... what your tell me what your i'm going to go into facebook right now and yeah. tell me what uh hold on let me just bring facebook up in the background uh well while, while we have Shalini here and i'm going to called, go ahead it's called contemporary oca creatives and Ooh, right it came, up, it came the... up right away good yay and there should be a link to enroll and um it has all the information on the oh gosh, enrollment you've got, page. You have 61 members there already. Yep. Isn't that right. exciting? I'm going to share my screen so that I can show you this beautiful Facebook group. So this is called, it's called Contemporary OCA Creatives. Yes. And this is the free public group. This is not the student group, but it's yeah, fostering but that thing. And you'll see enrollment now open right up there at the top with a picture of me just right there. You see that? Yeah. yeah. So all they have to do is click on that link that'll take them to the enrollment page. Now the enrollment page is fairly robust. It has all the information you need to uh, make an informed decision 
uh, all the price points and all that kind of stuff. So you can just scroll all the way up and down that whole thing. And it'll tell you all the access that you have. And there's more and there's more and there's more and there's more. And you can do two pay or one pay. You can buy it with a kit or without a kit, depending on how easy access to materials is for use. Many of my students are already active crafters and they have a lot of the things. Yeah. So if you scroll further down, just a little further, just a little further, this is one of my, uh, one of the gals that was the director of the art center where I most recently was teaching and she gave me a lovely, now you see on the left, you see those pictures? Yes. Those, uh, there's a leaf, a heart, an iris, a lotus, a dragonfly, a luna moth, and two kinds of landscapes. Those are student projects. Um, and these are the projects that are in the course. And every single one is built on the one before. So you start out with the two pieces, the leaf or the heart. Then you graduate to using the leaf shape and um, assembling segments. And then you move into using skinny pieces like in the dragonfly and the luna moth and then you learn how to do a uh, landscape and all the different things involved in that outstanding that's outstanding so it's, we, it is fun it's outstanding so we need to wrap up and but i wanted okay. to make sure that people knew during this wonderful interview together where to go so yes. the two places to go are to your website and also yes. to your open Facebook group that's on, uh, that's that's right. on Facebook to sign up. Yep. And, um, and I'll have you back. Uh, I'll have you oh, back hope... maybe in a month to, uh, to give us a little bit of an update. Oh, I, you know, the course ends on June 6th. That's our graduation. Fantastic. And I hoping that I will have some really cool things to share with you. And moving in through the summer, my job is to take everything that I've learned from my students from this first launch, yay, and taken all that I've learned and put it into the next offering, which is October, and working on my Adobe Illustrator work. And gosh, it's just like so much. I'm excited. It's just outstanding. And listen, one of the things I just want to say as we wrap up is it's so, this is such a gift that you have this knowledge and you can now share this knowledge with people forever, right? Your course is going to be available and out there and allow people to understand and learn about something they many of us yep. have never heard I of. I didn't before. know they would love. <laughs> I didn't know they would fall in love with it. And it's such an incredible creative practice. And having an online course means you're sharing your, the legacy of your knowledge essentially forever. And I it's am. such a gift. It's such that a gift. That was my goal, Anne. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining me, Wendy. You can tell it's getting a little dark here in Paris. I got to turn the lights on. Uh, and I'm we'll in my basement, so I have just a little wonderful north light here. You do have a beautiful north light. So thank you everyone for joining me. And if you're watching the replay, you're very welcome here as well. And yes. I always like to say in closing that I am Anne Follett, and it's never too late to create. And Wendy is a great example of that. <laughs> so I will see you again soon. And Thank you. Bye for now. Bye.